Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Mixing Feedback Monday episode 2. Really excited to be doing this one. Hope I can do more, so send me more mixes. In the description, I'll show you how. Today's mix is from Bo Denarius, and he kindly sent me a mix of a song he's doing with the following email. The song is a start-stop thing with the dynamics developing and then finishing with a more solid outro. It's more pop than urban or rock, but not really a chart pop song, I guess. The feedback I'm looking for is very general. I've written, recorded most vocal parts, produced and mixed the track in my home studio, except the female vocals, which is from Fiverr. So I've completely lost perspective on what it actually sounds like is there too much of anything too little or whatever cool great questions thanks for the description as well i personally worked with people on fiverr and gotten really good results i hired a drummer on my latest record on my song platypus i'll put the link to that as well why not some shameless self-promotion so yeah i haven't heard the song yet i'll be listening to the mix for the first time with all of you so just to tell you my procedure usually i i play the track one time without stopping um, and i listen with headphones the second time i listen with speakers through both listenings i'll be using some monitoring effects to see what's going on in the track if i need to so this one is just a spectrum analyzer these two are both loudness meters and sometimes they give different values so i just like to check both then there's a spectrogram and finally this last one is a correlation meter hitting exactly plus one is not good but hovering in this general area is pretty good so let's just listen to the song first and then we'll talk about it. it's three minutes and four seconds It's not the drinks, it's not the night, it's not the texture, you're not my type, I don't feel lonely, you don't look blue. Everybody here has got an itch to scratch Someone that not over, someone that they like Hopes and dreams that one day can come true Can't put my finger on it What it is you do to me And if you feel like I feel for you There's something about you to find. There's something about you to find. There's something about you. Wonderful. Wow, that was really good. Good job. That was such a good mix. There was very few things that I could find wrong with it. Really nothing. That said, I will give you some feedback. But before I do, I just want to listen to it with speakers also. So I'm going to pause the video for a second. 
All right, perfect. I also listened to it with speakers. And again, yeah, wonderful mix. It's real nice and pumping. I really like it overall. Obviously, I didn't I didn't rely on the loudness metering too much because I think this is pre-mastering. But, you know, it, it hovers around 18 luffs, which is very good. It gives plenty of room to your mastering engineer, whether it's you or somebody else, to work their magic. Some things that are really good with it, I think main vocals, so the male vocals are, are mixed really, really well. And I think this is your intention with it. They're, they're really like almost like uncomfortably close like like somebody's like whispering in my ear right which is i think the effect you're going for so i'm really behind it it's really good the vocals are really well compressed um they just they just shine they sound really good i really like this like at the end of each kind of start stop thing when there's like this sample Yeah, I love that. That's really good. I really like the tone of your kick overall. Something that I noticed, and we can also notice this just by looking at the track, is that between the parts that don't have kicks on them and the parts that do have kicks on them, there's very little dynamic difference. Your LU value is is pretty decent, like 7, 8, 9. Um, that area is, is, is pretty nice, kind of a dynamic range. That does get kind of narrower after mastering, though. So there's a little wiggle room there. I personally feel like you can make your kicks more impactful if the pattern passages before your kicks are a little quieter that said because there is that calm down before every time a kick comes in it does work one thing that i personally found a little jarring is is that arpeggiator thing that's a little bit too bright for me and uh, if it's too bright for me it will probably be really bright for most people because I have through years of just playing live gigs and stuff and just being like an old fart I've lost a lot of hearing sensitivity there so when something sounds really bright for me that means that it'll be really really bright for most people it was just a tad too bright and the transients are, are a little too sharp and also their level is quite high and that contributes a lot also to the parts where that have kick in them are definitely fatter but they're not necessarily louder so that's just something you may want to balance a little bit a question of preference of course i should say that like a lot of these are a matter of preference because your mix is very well done like you know your track arguably doesn't have a lot of depth but maybe that's by design right so you're you're maybe trying to create that kind of really close to my ear whispering in my ear kind of vocals especially like it gets really excited I tend to find out. I tend to find out. Those whispers are really close. They're not very spacious, but I think that's the point. You're not trying to make this sound spacious. You're trying to make it sound intimate. It's almost like ASMR in this part. Yeah, again, that like... Doom, doom, that one is also really sharp like the transients of a lot of your synths are really really sharp and that could be because the uh, the attack in their envelope is just very very kind of straight up so even just kind of curving that like you know adding one or two milliseconds just so it's a little bit more kind of natural sounding and not too much just like a beep could do wonders that said your your mix doesn't have a lot of percussive elements there's not a lot of hi-hat and things going on so it's nice that some of your synth uh, you know take on the responsibility of serving as melodic elements but also as percussive elements one thing i would say is basically whatever you're trying to achieve in a mix creating some contrast to that really helps in bringing it out so for example if your whole mix has a lot of reverb on it then your whole mix sounds washy but if you have some elements that are really dry and some elements that have a lot of reverb on them then the elements with reverb on them really feel spacious feel further away because we have something to compare them to in our brain and the contrary is true as well if everything is too dry then there's nothing to come compare that dryness to in our minds right all your elements are really dry and i think with the vocal it's a good decision i think obviously with kick and basses you want them somewhat dry and then the delays that you have on the synths are nice but for example when the female singer comes in around this area So those kind of like call and response vocals that that kind of like canon effect that you got going on is really nice kind of from a compositional point of view. I would personally not make the female singer so dry. I think you can add more kind of like spaciousness to it. I think mix wise they're the weak point of your mix. So all the elements are very good and that one element just feels like it needs more work. It feels still too dry. So that's something you should pay attention to. Kind of really work to make those melodic elements of the mix pop out. The way to do that is A by adding some more 
more spaciousness to, to her vocals. And they could definitely come up a little bit in the mix as well, especially if they're more spacious, if they're more wet with reverb, delay, or whatever else you want to add. Then it gives you room to make it loud without it kind of poking through and kind of masking anything in your vocals, right? Because right now they're both in the same place. They have the same treatment. They occur at different times, so they're not really like playing against each other. But the more you make the two sounds different, you'll get more chance to turn it up without masking your vocals. So this area, you know, this, it's like a 22 second chunk of your music. I think it needs more work, especially, you know, you worked with somebody on Fiverr, you paid good money for them. Really get your, get good bang for your buck and like, and work on this female singer. You want to showcase it almost more. And right now it feels too quiet. And the way to do that is through kind of like, again, contrast EQing. So maybe with your vocals, your, your vocals are kind of low endy. They're kind of dry. So maybe for this little passage, you can carve out some like 2K, 4K area from your vocals and then boost that area in the female vocals. And then obviously in the female vocals, you can have a higher value to your low cut because female singing fundamentals occur later. But then maybe even when they start around the 200 hertz, 150 hertz or whatever, like bring those down a little bit so that the fundamentals of your vocals are heard well. And then the more like melodic aspect of the female vocals can pop through better that way. So definitely you need more contrast there. There's something about you. Same thing with when you are doing the canon. So against your own vocals, I really like the difference in tone. So like there's something about you there. And that one is a little... Yeah, I really like this tone. It's really cool. But again, in terms of spaciousness, they're both like smack in the middle. And even like you can try something like ping pongy. So maybe it's like there's something about you center. And then there's something about you. One on the left. And there's something about you. There's something about you. Just like 20%. So like your, your main vocal is like smack center. And then it kind of goes like 20% left, 20% uh, right kind of like ping pongy. Something like that could be cool. It's not the dream. It's okay, so this right here is a click. It could be a vocal click. It's not the dream. I think you're saying it's not the drinks. This could be the transit from the K, but it does sound like a click, right? It just sounds very jarring. And I can see through the kind of waveform. It's just poking out. So that one, you want to do something to it. And again, you can play with your compressor on your vocals, but you already dialed that in pretty well. So really that could be just a case of volume automation as well. Just go to that K and just kind of do a little automation where you just bring that in so that it sits in the mix, right? Because that really kind of pops out. Again, if you're going for that A, ASMR effect, then that's what ASMR is. ASMR is a lot of like clicky, poppy, textury things, right? Even even further ahead in the same verse, you say the word texture. It's not the texture. Like when you say texture, that's a little clicky poppy too. Like again, it, it pops out, but it just overall sits in the mix better compared to like this element and this element. It's not much louder or much quieter. But when you come here, that just that just really pokes out for me. And it is a natural pop. It's a clicking and popping from your mouth. But I personally would, would curb that a little bit. Just to see whenever there's like something really poking out. Overall, your whole track has like a little sharpness. Maybe transient design is an area where you want to improve which is really advanced mix stuff right so you're already your mix is so advanced really really well done in your genre this right here that's just a straight up click because because i mean this is an f right f almost sounds like an s it's like a cloudy high-end thing but i don't know what this is but whatever this is and it's only uh and it's only appearing in one of your channels so that could be a click or it could be like you forgot to put one fade on an item or something so so it's just creating that little bit of squareness. You don't look this this one's fine, you know. Don't feel you don't look Gorgeous. I love this part. Same thing with this synth. Like, whoo! It's, it's stereo and it's wide, but again, the kind of epicenter of the sound is right behind your vocals, right? So when you're having a lot of stereo elements, you may want to refrain from just kind of panning them. But, you know, most software also have like either something where you can kind of reduce the width and then pan the whole thing. So your width is right now full degree, like bring it in closer in and then panning it. I hope these hand gestures make <laughs> as much sense as they do in my head. But yeah, either doing that or just using like in Reaper, 
Reaper, I don't know what DAW you use. In Reaper, you can you can go and you can go select dual pan. And then dual pan just gives you two pan knobs, so one per channel. Because, you know, if a stereo track is wide, but still the epicenter is center, you know, once you master it and everything, really all that remains is that a lot of that center. Everybody has got an itch to scratch. I really like the way these two harmonies sit together. That's really perfectly done. It's great. No problems there. Again, this is great, but you could just automate it a little bit down. Overall, your S's and K sounds, so like any T and any K sound are very very sharp on speakers they sound fine on headphones they sound just a little jarring little podcasty so it's not a matter of completely changing your mix because i totally at least i hope that i get the intention behind doing that just being really close to the listener but yeah they could definitely be curved a little without you losing that effect right just pops in my ear just kind of slightly the wrong way just a slightly wrong amount of tickle in my ear if that makes sense that k again the harmonies are great i love that that uh, that's very good i can put yeah that's that's my jam right there i can put my finger Love that like whippy snare sound, really nice. So many times I get mixes that are, there's just no snare and I'm like, oh, you know, people don't want to design snares. So they just leave it out of composition. And I was kind of just stereotyping your mix early on like that. And then the snare hit, I'm like, ah, this snare is awesome. Yeah, really good tone there. <laughs> So this last part of your song is a testament of how much loudness range really helps, right? So by the time we get here... Your song goes up. And that's really nice, like like it gets much louder. And you you do get some peaks that are not really perfect for, for the mix stage. If you read like Spotify guidelines, they want true peak at minus one and then they want the integrated LUFS value at around 14. You're not hitting that because this is pre-mastering, so your loudness overall is good. But just in this bit of the song, you do get some peaks that are very, very loud that your mastering engineer needs to bring down your whole mix a bunch and then work from there which is not a problem like mastering engineers can turn things down and then boost them their own way that said like before sending this out to a mastering engineer i will just kind of bring the whole shtick down a little bit especially in this part because i really do like that this part is much louder than these parts if i were mixing this song like the the verses would just be slightly quieter overall then these parts would be medium and then this part would be you know less than medium but more than your normal normal kind of low amounts and then explosive amounts over here. Let's listen to this part a little bit more. Same advice I would give for this part of the vocal melodies, because at this point, the vocals are more, you know, similar to a string than singing, right? So really make those pop out by by first EQing kind of the melodic part, and then, you know, you can, you can reduce the body of the vocals and the female vocals and add to the melodic part from, yeah, maybe like 800 to like 1.4 area. You know, it could be so much more epic in this part. I really like your fade out because you th I think that you're having kind of different elements. You know, you're not just doing a fade out with the master. You're actually kind of bringing down different elements differently, which is really nice. And then the bass kind of stays, which is really nice. One thing you can do to like add to this effect is what I call like filtering fade outs. So you're not fading out volume. You're taking a high cut filter or a low pass filter, changing the frequency of that. So, so your overall volume is still dropping down, but it's not because of a reduction in volume. It's because you're just slowly getting rid of frequencies. And because your last element in the song is a bass, that would sound really nice and almost become like the way it sounds to me is like a person leaving the club because the best song is over. Slowly the high frequencies become hard to hear and the low frequencies get like more like, <laughs> you know, when you're like outside the club and all you're hearing is that bass, all you're hearing is that kick. Just kind of whatever you got, like those synths and things are going, like the synths gone.
the base is staying, right? So get rid of all this stuff by just filtering. Something I always kind of find uh, from a personal taste point of view people don't do often of is automation. So you have these sections coming in one after the other and mix wise, there's zero differentiation between them. And I'm not saying from one to the other, they should completely be treated differently, but a little bit of automation, just slightly changing the EQs a little bit, just adding some modulation at really low rates or things like that so that you're not hearing the exact sounds I think really goes the extra mile. I was listening to Kendrick Lamar's uh, Damn and like you know like it's still beat based. The first I don't know 30 times you listen to Damn you're just listening to the lyrics but but after a few times and I'm listening to the mixes and I'm listening to the beats there's so much like slight flutter and movement in the in the mixes that despite the fact that it's a beat despite the fact that there's still a lot of them are just loops just things come and go and they are just slightly different. The best example of that one is it's the last song, Duckworth, where the beat has a few en elements. The one is like... And that one kind of comes in at different places and gets faded and, and filtered differently. And then some other things in the song, some other elements in the song, every time they like come and go, they are just slightly different. Something that you don't even notice the first 30 times you listen to the record. But then after a while, you're like, yeah. Something that our brains do, right? It's a, it's a psychoacoustic effect is that when we hear a sound that's very periodic and very constant, our brain starts to ignore it. Because when we hear new instances of it, it doesn't give us any extra data, right? When you have a wall clock and it goes tick, when you come in the house, the thing is loud. It's like, tss, tss, tss. you can hear it because you haven't been hearing it. But after 10 seconds, you're in the house, you are no longer hearing it. The sound is coming. It's entering your ears the same amount, but your brain just starts to ignore it. It goes, I know that thing is there. I'm aware of it existing in my space. I just don't need to process that data and I'm going to process some other data. What we can learn from this in music is like, if something is so exact and so periodically reoccurring, your brain will kind of stop hearing it. So those are the overall notes. Uh, overall, your mix is great. The tone of everything is great. Really like masterful compression. Really love what you did with all that stuff. Your vocals are really well recorded and very well mixed. I like that ASMR-y like intimate effect a lot. When the female vocals come in, they feel very untreated compared to the rest of the track and they feel very low. They kind of feel swept under the rug. So that's an area to tackle. Despite me being fully on board with the ASMR treatment, these like pokey areas of the track really need some serious help either with automation just bring them down a little bit. So work on those a little bit. Work on your k and t sounds in terms of how percussive they are and work on your s sounds in terms of how snaky they are, right? They're just like s. So a de -er would go a long way. Really like the quiet parts. Really like the dynamic range of the song. Really like that it comes up in the end. It's definitely the right spirit, but there are some values here that are really high. So overall, most of it is balancing. I would balance the arpeggiator synth that loops from the beginning. I would make that just slightly darker, meaning just take out a little bit of the highs, just a little bit. There are some elements that despite being stereo are very centric, like center focused. And other than that, man, great mix. Good job. Really well done. I should have asked you from the beginning if this is pre-mastering or post-mastering, but I think this is pre-mastering. So if you're mastering this yourself or sending it out to a mastering engineer, just balance this slightly more. Don't worry too much about loudness. So if you bring down your LUFS values, another... 4 dB. So rather than being in the minus 18 integrated area, if you're in the minus 21, it's totally fine for a mixing engineer. But just make sure that you don't have any true peaks hitting um, those crazy amounts. Anything like above minus two or something, pre-mastering is no good. Overall, your transients are a little sharp. With some things, it could be totally perfect with any percussive elements. And due to the lack of more percussive elements kind of throughout the song until the end, they really work. Like the synths work as percussion as well as melodies, which is really nice. The difference of like two milliseconds in the attack envelope of those synths, it's something that you should at least explore. I'm not saying change them, but just see if you change the attack envelope of your synth one millisecond. See how that does. It may just get it soft enough and then suddenly it may also make the reverbs like sit better, make the delays kind of poke out less. It may solve a lot of problems because no real sound on the planet has an attack envelope of zero milliseconds. There's always some ramp up. So those were my notes. I hope you liked this. I hope 
hope this isn't too long. I'm going to edit this out a little bit and cut some of the crap I said. So, yeah. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions in the comments or anywhere else. And, um, yeah, we, we can just, you know, keep this chat going. For everybody else, check the link in the description. I'll tell you how to send me mixes. And I hope to do more Mixing Feedback Mondays because, you know, the last one we did was three weeks ago and I didn't get a mix until today. So send me mixes and I'll see y'all very soon. Take care. Thank you again, Bo, for sending me a mix. Bye-bye.